Um, I did the verse, but I won't go through the whole thing. I'll, I'll read it quickly so that we know what the verse is, but there's just one part I wanted to accent. All right? And, it, and the verse is Matthew 2, 2, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. All right? Now there's all different things. I, you can do born and you can do appeared and you can do all the other things, worship. But I wanted to put emphasis on the star because I've just been searching stuff that was interesting about it. And it, all they tell you in the any of the books that you read for figuring out what a Greek word is, a luminous body resembling a star such as the wise men saw in the sky leading them to Bethlehem. We can assume that the motion of that luminous body which appeared to the wise men was different than any other stars. That's as much as they tell you in the in all of the Strongs and all the other ones. So they can't really trace a whole lot of it down, but I went back into the 90s and 80s and such and found a gentleman by the name of Colin J. Humphreys. And he was uh, working for Cambridge and he was working with NASA and all the astronomical stuff. And he kind of <clears throat> put it all together in a fashion that said one thing and one thing only, it happened to be a particular comet that was the director of pointing towards Christ. And I'll just go through it, just listen to it, and you, you don't have to believe it, it's not, but it's just kind of interesting information, all right? Now, he talks about informed the king. They talked to the king, the king knew of it, but this was not a normal sight in the night of seeing this particular type of star. Obviously, something was different about it. The Magi, were when they got to the king, they quoted Micah. So we also know now that they have scripture as a background. They were not devil worshipers, as some of the different papers came out and said it was Satan that was pointing towards Christ so that the king could find him and kill him. So there's a bunch of different stories out there, but this one's relatively sound, all right? So, the star moved with them, and it positioned over where Christ was born towards the end of their journey. And they found a child, okay, not... And from what I gather, he was probably... A lot of them said two, but from the papers and the stuff I've gone through, he was about probably three or four months old when they found him. Because they left for Egypt right after the, the wise men found them, two months later, three months later. So it's just, these things need to be, you can flesh them out whenever you want if you care to. The Magi's date is from 6 BC. It, they were a priestly group. They were astronomers and astrologers. Not in a demonic way, but in trying to observe all the natural realms and give their higher ups information to, to deal with things, all right? Now, they ran into God in 586 B.C., the Magi did. They did that because of Daniel, all right? When Daniel was captured, he was sent off, and he was put in charge of these folks, and he taught them of his God, all right? And this, is, this happened when the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem and carried people away. They were familiar with the Savior King scenario because of what they had been taught by the different ones that they had captured. They must have had an unmistakably clear astronomical or astrological message to start the journey that they started. So they saw something that set them off. Everybody, I would, if you and I see something in the sky, I mean, we see it in the sky, but when you're studying the sky, it's an entirely different scenario. Right. Now, here's some of the characteristics that they had from this star. There are three particular ones. It was a star that had newly appeared. All right. Um, any of you stargaze at all? When you tell us to. <laughs> okay. When you go out and you stop and you look to the north, you always find the Big Dipper. Always find. If you go through the bow, you can find the, the Little Dipper, and if you go back to the tail end of the Little Dipper, you can find the North Star, always in the same place. 
rotating around the North Star. Okay? If you look up into the south a little bit, you can see Orion, the three stars that you see across it. So there are things that you're going to be able to spot every time you look up. All right? You have to, to say that in the biblical times, it was so much different because they didn't have any kind of noise that distracted from their correct. Their, their visual experience of the evening. No so, light bubbles. There was no light. Yeah. There were no yeah. light bubbles. Yeah. yeah. I just showed her the light bubble from Merritt Island coming back from Titusville. Yeah. Well, if you travel the St. John's River in an airboat back in the 70s, you could see O'Galley, you could see Melbourne, yeah. you could see Coco, you could see Titusville, and you could on a good night you could see New Smyrna. <clears throat> All right. That's how you know cluttered the sky gets. They didn't have that problem at all, and they were always studying they were and it was their their job description to pay attention to the natural phenomena okay now this happened and newly appeared and this says this in Matthew 2 7 so there's a time frame that's involved in all this as we get to it all right it traveled slow this is number two it traveled slowly through the sky against a star background all right from the east and then it went south that's not normal uh, if you stand outside and pay attention to the space station, you can always find it going a particular way when you look for it. You can see it. All right. Well, this one was not following any patterns that they had obviously seen before. Number three, the star stood over Bethlehem, which it says that in Matthew 2, 9. All right. So we all have in our mind already that the Holy Spirit does not put something in the Bible that is not intended to be there. Alright? So, now, here's another one. Tradition has it that the star pointing out the very stable in which Christ was born is this particular item. Alright? No scripture to back this up. There's nothing that, that you can physically say was a comet, but you have to know the terminology. Matthew says it was viewable from Jerusalem at the time that it was pointing at Bethlehem. The star stood over the place where the child was born, i.e. Bethlehem. All right? Cannot be, now there's different things that took place in these particular years. Seven, seven six, and five BC were all items that were, were busy in, in the star patterns, so to speak. All right? It could not be a conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn in 7 BC because that doesn't work any of the time frames out and it doesn't give you any information to direct you in the right, right direction. It was not what other scientists say. It was not a supernova. A supernova is not going to point at anything. It's just going to be a big... All right? Now, the next thing is it could be a comet east on its way to the sun goes around the sun then it comes back and it's pointing in a different direction but the, the tail is still pointing in that direction even though the sun's over here sun is going to shoot it out and shoot it out so it's going to look like something pointer when you're coming back this direction all right now took a, takes approximately two months to make that loop to come by earth from what they say for, for a particular comet any comet Halley's comet for instance all right now the term that they use in the Bible, stood over, appears to be uniquely used and applied in ancient literature to describe a common, nothing else. All right. No other record of such phrases being used to describe any other astrological object. So somebody's gone through and scouted up the way they talk about stuff. Now, an example of, and I, that they put together of some of the information that's out there. Everybody know who Josephus is? He's a historian. What does he record? Jewish history. History. All right. Now, he was a contemporary of Matthew and described Halley's Comet in 12 BC, which appeared before the death of Marcus Agrippa, as a star called Comet stood for several days over the city of Rome. So there's a pattern that is developed through their conversations. All right. Now, Excuse me. Celestial bodies appear to move across the night sky due to the rotation of our Earth. Comets move against the backdrop of stars, so they're trying to fill in the blanks of the questions they ask. Comets noticed by astronomers and astrologers in the Magi's case are always something that is to be paid attention to. 
it either brought catastrophic ideas or it brought great victory and, and positive things. So there were two venues of that. Now, here's another one. This is kind of interesting. In 1303 AD, a fresco by Giotto painted a comet above the head of baby Jesus. For whatever reason, he did that in one of his frescoes, all right? Now, the, the Chinese are really the best history keepers of the stars. They've been doing it for thousands of years. They have a particular scenario from 20 BC to 10 AD that they have somebody's tracked down their information. There was a comet visible in 12 BC, all right? But it was only for 56 days. And it doesn't work any of the time frames out for all the different things. Herod saying, Herod dying, this happening, tripped, all the other items that go with it. The other one is 4 BC, which was in April. They didn't put any information about it at all. And when they put the one down for 5 BC, all right, it happened between March 9th and April 16th. Now, as I get to it, you're going to find out those that went, that's the window of time when Christ was born. All right? So, but that one was visible for over 70 days, and they called it a sui in Chinese, which meant it had a tail. All right? They mentioned whether or not they did. It was a hui or a sui. This one happened to be a sui, not a hui. Okay? What was the time frame? Um, the time frame was from, from March 9th to April 6th in BC 5. All right, so comets appearing, this chart is the, the, all the comets that appeared, but these are the ones that start fitting it in. Now, the birth of Christ, which we know as Christmas nowadays, has been shifted a little bit odds and ends. It's not something that's horrible. It's something that is part pagan, part Christian, all the other things. But at that particular time, Christ was probably born the week before or after Passover in B.C. 5. All right, Kathy, of course, being the mathematician, wanted to know what happened to 4, 3, 2, and 1. So I said, I think they just killed the calendar and started with one on the other side. But somebody else can scout that up. All you mathematicians, you go ahead. Have at it, all right? But three astronomical events happened in the window between 7 and 5, all right? The first one happened in 7, and it was a triple conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. Any astronomical person will tell you that means those two planets came within one degree of each other three times in that year. Okay? You said a triple conjunction? Triple conjunction. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. mean three? Yeah, triple. They came together. They, they came within each other three times oh, during oh, one okay. year. Oh, okay. All right? All right? Which is very unusual. I'll show you how unusual as we go on. That is the beginning of when the Magi, paying attention to the sky, started saying, okay, something's going on, all right? And what year was this, five? Or this was in 7 BC, seven. Okay. all right? So they're starting to get all, you know, that kind of stuff because they're seeing stuff in the sky. Well, then the next year, okay, there was a, they call it a massing of planets. Three planets got together in 6 BC. Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars got into an alignment. All right. Now, that doesn't mean anything by itself, but it's another indication to the Magi that we need to start paying attention. It's starting to line up with information we have in the past. And then the third thing, the one that really sent them over the edge, was the appearance of a comet in Capricornus, in the constellation Capricorn. All right. This was in BC 5. Now they've, they're really tanked up, they're looking for camels now, okay? <laughs> looking for camels, getting their bags packed, all right? With all these things going on. Now, the Jupiter one, the very first one, it indicates an important religious or political change is in the works. That's what the Magi say, all right? Now, the next one that shows up is the planets being aligned is, a, is, is something that's called, they call it a, a massed conjunction that is, they have a particular word, I couldn't even say the word, I couldn't even spell the word. What it amounts to is it just doesn't happen that often. It's very infrequent in the stars, all right? So, at any rate, another gentleman in, in 1497 claimed that a conjunction of ja 
of Jupiter and Saturn in 1396 BC, before three years before Moses was born. So what they're, what they're doing is they're taking all their history and start packing it together. And in doing so, they made some fun stuff. Now, planet massing is the second one, observed by Kepler in 1604. He calculated, instead of just guessing, he calculated that massing of Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars occurred only once every 805 years. Okay? Now you have to remember, Magi have been in business for how long? Daniel to then. Bunch of years. They have a bunch of stuff down on parchment. They got a bunch of stuff stashed in their archives, and they know what to do with it. Suggested that it coincided with great events in history. Here's a, here are the people that are involved in these particular triples. Moses in 1617, Isaiah in 812 B.C., Christ in 6 and 7 B.C., Charlemagne in 799 A.D., and the Reformation in 1604. Every one of those are 800-year cycles, and these planets happen to get together for that program. Now, it, 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 this is where everybody starts thinking everything's getting quinky-dinky type stuff. I'm talking about a God that knows how to lay things out so that they happen at the right time. All right, now, the comet part. Magi spotted the comet, put an exclamation point in their excitement level, and they decided that they see a star in the east. Clearly provided a weighted sign that the birth of a king was quote unquote imminent. Imminent enough that they loaded up their camels and started shagging it to the east. All right? And the nice thing about it is, it talks about that very thing in Daniel 1. And it was very interesting. Comet told the birth was imminent. It was 550 miles from Babylon to Jerusalem. It took them about two months to journey. And that comet could be seen every morning at the horizon. And in times, they said, obviously it was seen during the day. Halley's Comet could be seen during the day, the last time it came through in the 1800s in America. There are pictures of it. The cowboys got to see it. I didn't. But the Cowboys did, all right? So, now, I put a summary together of all this information. It's just very interesting how it was put together. Astronomical and historical evidence suggests the star of Bethlehem was a comet, which was visible in 5 BC and described in Chinese records. A comet uniquely fits the description in Matthew of a star newly appeared traveled through the sky slowly against the star background and stood over Bethlehem. <laughs> it is purposed that a remarkable sequence of astronomical events stimulated the journey of the Magi, the triple conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, the massing of Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, 6 BC, and finally the appearance of a comet in Capricornus in 5 BC, the star of Bethlehem. This info was rich in significance to the Magi that a new king was about to be born in Israel. Information point to 5 BC, March 9th through May 4th, probably around the time of the Passover. Birth in spring consists with shepherds being in the fields with the sheep at night and consistent with the census of Caesar Augustus. So they scientifically went down and tried to find purposes and situations for all the points. Those and the paper that I have that I gave to the class for Kevin, all of the information about the shepherds, the shepherds weren't a bunch of idiots in a field. They were a bunch of special shepherds raising special sheep for a special purpose. And that special purpose was born on one of the nights that they were watching those special sheep for a special purpose in a special place. And that was Jesus Christ. They knew exactly where to find that baby. They knew exactly where to go to find that baby. And it says they packed up their giddy hop and went in to see that baby immediately. So there's tons of other stuff that I'd love to tell you, but it's just more and more papers. But at any rate, it's just kind of interesting. Go ahead. If, if it was a comet, mm -hmm. most comets you see it, mm -hmm. and then you see it again. Right. That's why they said it was either... But the fact that they, when it went around the sun, it was so large and it was so functional that it was close by, and they noticed it the whole way, and they noticed it every morning when they would, when they would get up to take off to go. That's why they were saying that it was something that lasted for 70 days. It took it so long to come by us. 
I don't, it's, whether it happened with our rotation being perfect compared to where it was coming around the sun, I couldn't get all that. I didn't get right. all that information. I, but mean, it was I, I guess what I'm saying, it sounds like they only saw it either coming it or have, going. It could have been. It could have been a long stretch coming back. Right. Very much so. It's just very interesting. I'll I'll give you a. You can scout it up because there's truckloads of information. And this is back from the 70s, 80s, and then he goes back to the 1400s and pays attention to it again and finds out different reports that have been made. So anyway, it's just interesting. And my thing is, everybody says, well, it's kind of nutty. Well, I think it's pretty nifty that the God that created the universe can create a timetable that puts everything together to find a bunch of guys that were taught by Daniel to see a comet that nobody had ever seen before coming across the sky and knowing exactly where to go. That's way too many coincidences for me. So, anyway. You said, you said this particular comet was Halley's comet? No, Halley's comet was in 12. Okay. Yeah, no. Halley appears every 76 years. Yes, right. And the last and time was yeah. towards the end of the last century. Yeah, we, I think it went by, yeah. It went by in the 80s. I went by in the 80s, didn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. so they couldn't see it. They told me a lie. They said it would be somewhere in a you know. Here's one. Typical, <laughs> typical weather people, you know. Yeah. But at any rate, so tonight, at any rate, you're just kind of handy dandy that when you finish this, and tonight if you go out and look at Orion's belt, off to the left-hand side, two fists, you should see a green globe. That globe is a comet that's going back by. So, the, uh, only if there's any sky to see. It messed up my meteor shower the past two nights, so the we're just not having a really good week. Yes, sir, what? The Magi brought gifts. Yeah, they brought gifts. And that's another study entirely. Myrrh, frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Yeah, those are all high-dollar gifts, by the way. If you think Mary and Joseph left that little pavilion with nothing in their back pocket, you're dreaming. My so, interest is in the various places where myrrh was mentioned with Christ's troubles. And that they said that myrrh was used as a painkiller. Yeah. And twice he was offered something to drink and once on the cross. He, he refused because that particular concoction had myrrh in it. Right. Then on the other hand, he was offered it a second time. This time it didn't have myrrh in it. And he drank it because he didn't want to prolong his, his, his right. he didn't want to be anesthetized. Right. Because he came there to experience everything he was going to for us. Right. Myrrh was a, uh, it was like salt, yeah. as a matter of fact. It was a commodity to be exchanged in lieu of something. But what I'd like to find out is in this particular case, maybe later you can elaborate. Yes, on sir. Why, why myrrh is showing up as one of their gifts when he wasn't involved at this time that way. He was young. Right. Do you'd like to find the placement of that particular spice? Yeah, sure. Why it shows up now. Hey, there's so many things you can do for Christmas every year that there's no reason you should ever be bored with it. 